In the previous video, we talked a little bit about um, using the color picker and how that all works, dealing with hue and saturation and brilliance and all those types of things. So you can, you know, really pretty easily go in and pick a lot of great colors. So this is the, the little scribble that I had from that video. If I wanted to, I could make a new layer, come into the color picker, choose a different color, say OK, and start drawing with that color. Now you can imagine if I was doing this a few times and had a significantly more complicated uh, drawing that, you know, if I at some point later came back and really wanted, you know, that specific green or something, you know, how would I do that? That could get kind of tricky. Well, Photoshop makes it pretty easy. If, you know, I had, you know, had worked on a very big file and I decided, shoot, I really want that green, how would I do it? What I can do is come and grab the eyedropper tool out of the toolbox and hover over it and click. And you'll see when I do that the color in the foreground changes to that green. Okay, so now if I were to do something on my new layer, it would be in that green. Once your file gets more complicated, um, that can be a little bit tedious and maybe not that easy to dig around and find what you're looking for. It's certainly a great way to go, but we have a little trick that we can use to make our lives a little bit easier. And that's using the swatches palette that we put up here on our screen. So when we're actually in the color picker, you'll see that there is an add to swatches option. So if I click on that while I'm in there, I can give it a name if I so choose, or I could leave it at swatch one, say OK. You'll see that it actually appears in my swatches. So if I wanted to, I could come through, pick a variety of colors, say add to swatch, OK. And I could be creating a color palette like that, absolutely. Or, you know, if I had something more complicated going on, I could be picking the color out of my file coming over and you'll see that when I do that and hover over the swatches in the blank area I can just click with that little paint bucket say OK and it will actually throw the new color up there so you can very easily create your own custom swatches by doing it that way and then these colors will be available for you so if I have my paintbrush active and I'm wanting to paint with one of these colors I can just come in, click on one, wait till my cursor turns into the eyedropper. You'll see in the lower left that my foreground color changes to that, and now I have it. So that's a really, really nice way to work and have them available. If you remember in our color picker, if I just open that up, we had all of our color libraries here. Remember there was the Pantone and, and so on. Well, those are also available here in the swatches. If I click in the upper right hand corner of that menu on that little button and bring it down, you'll see that we have a lot of options here, including all of those. So if you wanted to work with those in the swatches, you could. Let's say I pick the Pantone solid coated. If I click on that, very much like the brushes, it will say, do you want to replace your current swatches, which would get rid of these four that I have here, or would you like to append and add to them? So I'll just say append so we can see what that looks like. And it kept those four colors that I created, plus added all of the Pantone colors as it has them in the library. So it's basically doing a hue with different tints, shades, and tones of each color. I can actually click and drag my swatches menu to make that bigger so that we can see that. And there's a lot of colors available in there. I can click on any one of them. That will become my active color. And if I draw with it, you can see that. So once again, I got to that by going to this menu right here and picking it. Now, if you decide that that's too many colors or you don't want it, there's a variety of ways to get to that. One way would be to say right here, reset swatches, and that will go to the default look of the swatches. And let's do that right now so we can see what that looks like. I'll say reset, and it's going to ask me, do you want to replace them? Yes, I do, because I want to get rid of all those. Okay. And I do not want to save 
my swatches, that's fine. So this is the generic look for the swatches palette and it's, it's very, very simple. Now, if you want to get to a screen like I had before where this was totally empty and you want to make your own palette, if you click on any one of these and drag it, you can throw them out. But you can imagine that doing that would be somewhat tedious. So instead, I can go back to this menu and instead of saying reset swatches, I'll go to the one above that that says preset manager. The preset manager um, is useful for a variety of reasons, but very simply we can go in, click and delete the swatches out of our screen. So if I click on this first one, I'll get a little highlight around there. I can then hold down the shift key to click on the end swatch. You see how they all highlight. Now I can say delete. And when I say I'm done, you see this is emptied out. So now if I want to pick colors, add to swatches, okay. It will add them up there and it's a lot cleaner and neater to work with. So that's a really useful tool using swatches to work in Photoshop so that the colors that you're using frequently are very easily available for you.